Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning for those that are uh, in, in China and in other places. Hello. Welcome, everyone, to the 2022 Fitch Colloquium. I am Jorge Oteropilos, Professor and Director of Historic Preservation at Columbia University's Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. Our colloquium tonight is virtual, it's spread around the world, but it is made possible by um, our being at Columbia University and in New York. And it's in light of that, that I wanna start by acknowledging that uh, we are gathered virtually uh, here in New York in Lenape Hoken, the unceded ancestral homeland of the Lenape peoples. And so I ask you to join me in acknowledging the Lenape community and their traditional territory, elders, ancestors, and future generations. And in acknowledging that as a school at Columbia in, in New York City and in the United States as a nation, this school was founded upon the exclusions and erasures of many indigenous people. In our school, GSAP is committed to addressing the deep history of erasure of indigenous knowledge in the professions in the built environment. And so um, today we are gathered to, to think about the built environment. And every year, the Fitch Colloquium gathers the world's leading figures to think about the built environment through the lens of preservation and to think about the key issues that are shaping the built environment and what preservation can do to address those issues. Now, this year's colloquium is organized in collaboration with the Museum of Modern Art. And it will address and examine the role of preservation in China's future. We are honored by the distinguished group of Chinese architects who will be presenting and discussing their works and ideas with us tonight. The idea for this conference really sprung out of a dialogue with Martino Stierley, the Philip Johnson Chief Curator of Architecture and Design at the Museum of Modern Art in relation to the current exhibition that uh, he and his team have curated titled Reuse, Renew, Recycle, Recent Architecture from China, which is on view uh, through July 4th, and I encourage all of you to go see it. Um, I wanna take this opportunity to thank Martino and the team at MoMA for this collaboration, and in particular, Evangelos Cotsioris, um, assistant curator at MoMA. Martino will say more about the exhibition in a minute, but I'll just say um, a few framing thoughts. The exhibition, of course, foregrounds the central role that preservation has taken in how Chinese architects think about the built environment and its future. And this is a dramatic shift from the way that we had become accustomed to thinking about Chinese architectural practice, primarily concerned with the creation of new cities, which from our perspective here in the United States seem to spring up almost overnight. Um, the interest in the new seems to now have shifted to an interest in rethinking that existing built environment. Now, together with that come a number of really important questions, not only for China, but for the entire world. We come to the realization that the world is built up, that the kind of energy that we have spent to build up the world um, is no longer available to us to do it one more time and that the world that we build up is falling apart and it requires a tremendous amount of care, but that we can't just simply rebuild the world because again, we don't have that energy. So we have to think creatively about how we are going to maintain the existing built environment as it decays in a way that doesn't use up our resources and that deals with the problem of climate change. So from this perspective, new kinds of thinking are required, new ideas about what it means to be an architect, what it means to be creative, what it means to design 
and to think of design not simply as new construction um, and to think of development as not simply as new construction. And so it is really important for us to understand the role that China is playing in this rethinking of the built environment uh, and the leading figures that are going to be joining us today are going to open up a whole new set of questions for us to understand. China has taken a leading role in the world's economy, has taken a leading role in many aspects of our lives. Much of the material world that we experience as Americans is deeply enmeshed in material flows that, um, that involve China as well. And our understanding as preservationists of China has not kept pace with this leading role. Our understanding of preservation in China as Americans, um, and I would say as, as in Western culture in general, has been rather scant. So this is the beginning of an opportunity for us to begin to unpack the new thinking about preservation that is happening in China and to begin to enter into a dialogue with the leading practitioners that are thinking, that are, that are leading this, this turn towards preservation in the fields of the built environment. Um, one of the things that is striking about the work of, that we're gonna see in, in, uh, in the uh, colloquium is the way in which preservation has has been harnessed as a way as an as a creative act as a rethinking about creativity and that of course ties very much to the way that we at columbia think about preservation preservation is a creative act for us we understand it as a way to rethink the role of the past in contemporary culture in contemporary society and we think of the built environment as both a material and a social reality. And so in the same breath, the built environment for us is a material and a social um, uh, reality. And so every act of preservation from our perspective at Columbia is a sociopolitical and a cultural act. And so it's in that light that we want to really think about the work that we're gonna see um, and to discuss it and probe its implications, both environmental in terms, and in terms of the culture, the politics, and that they manifest aesthetically. Because in the end, preservation lands up in the world and has a physical aesthetic reality and and impresses us with that aesthetic reality um, as human beings. And so experience will be one of the things we will be discussing today. Now, the experience of this particular conference today is going to be very different than most conferences um, that we've held, most Fitch Colloquia. Uh, most Fitch Colloquia have been one day, they've, they've been one full day. This is our first um, uh, sleepover um, Fitch Colloquium because we're going to be having an evening um, uh, session, which starts today. And then we're all, in America at least, we're all going to go to bed and then we're going to wake up and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. will be the next part of the, the Fitch Colloquium. So um, it's, it's kind of exciting to think that we will have the opportunity to reflect on this first session and then, uh, and then have the second session um, tomorrow. Um, I, I have to say that um, one of the pleasures of organizing this conference, apart from the collaboration with Martino Evangelos and the MoMA team, has been um, the role of our own students at Columbia University in helping to organize it, the way that they've really leaned in to help us identify the key uh, leading figures in China that are working on preservation. Some of them are part of the show at, at MoMA and others are not, and others have been identified by our students. I have to say that um, we are just so fortunate at Columbia to have some of the most dynamic, creative, 
uh, and intelligent Chinese students, so committed to this building bridges across cultures um, and across uh, China and the United States in particular. And so I wanna take a moment to thank them because this conference was really made possible in many ways by them and the conversations we had and the suggestions that they made. Luxi Yang, Xu Shi Yin, Ziming Wang, Daoxin Shen, Shi Yu Li, Yin Jie Tian, Hong Ye Wang, Wenjing Xue, Zi Hao Zong, Xu Ya Zhao, Janning Wei, and Ye Shu. They are amazing, and we are just really indebted to them. They will be participating in the discussion afterwards. The format of our conference is going to be a series of presentations uh, followed by a conversation. The first of the two will be moderated by Martino, uh, and the second tomorrow I will moderate. I want to uh, finish by uh, thanking um, Dean uh, Weiping Wu for her support. Um, she herself embodies that bridge between China and, and the United States and her work and scholarship. Uh, and I also want to thank Sarah Grace Godwin, uh, Program Manager for Historic Preservation, for all the work that she has done to make sure that this conference uh, is, uh, runs smoothly, as well as the GSAP events team, which is just unbelievable. Um, it, from Stefan Boddicker uh, to Lucy Kresbach and everybody else on, on the team. So thank you all. Um, so without further ado, I would like to turn the, um, the virtual podium over uh, to Martino Stierli, uh, who will be moderating the first session. And I want to thank you, Martino, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Looking forward to the, to the event. Yes, thank you so much, Jorge, for this uh, wonderful introduction and obviously also for the opportunity to collaborate on this event. Uh, you were the one who reached out to us and uh, su suggested this after having seen the exhibition currently on view at the Museum of Modern Art. And so we're very thrilled to be able to uh, co-host this event. I want to thank you for your spirit and for you know um, your enthusiasm in making this possible. I want to thank your team, in, in particular Sarah Grace Godwin and the whole uh, GSAP team who are working behind the scenes uh, to make this a successful event. And of course, I also want to thank the speakers tonight that um, whom I'm going to introduce in just one moment. And finally, I would also like to thank Evangelos Kotsioris, who has been the co-curator of uh, this um, exhibition here at MoMA and um, whose um, contribution was equally seminal in making this a success. I wanted to start with sharing just um, a few um, images of um, the ongoing exhibition in the ground floor of the Museum of Modern Art. Um, I'm suspecting that many of you who are based in New York um, have seen the exhibition already. If you have not, you still have a chance to see it until early July, as Jorge was mentioning. Um, I suspect equally that those of you who are based in China have not yet had a chance to see the exhibition. So I'm hoping that these three images that we have assembled for tonight will, you know, in a way substitute a little for an actual visit. Reuse, renew, recycle, recent architecture from China. Um, you're seeing here the title wall of the exhibition. Um, I think tries to uh, rethink what contemporary architecture is. And Jorge was already mentioning that we generally understand contemporary architecture as something new, starting from scratch, creating new buildings. And in that sense, uh, perhaps as something that is antithetical to the notion of preservation. And what we were trying to do in this exhibition was to highlight uh, an emerging um, generation of practitioners in China who are um, actually, I think, trying to bridge the gap between contemporary architecture on the one hand and preservation in the other by a really um, innovative um, 
a variety of innovative approaches, differing approaches uh, to deal with the pre-existing urban environment, with the reuse of pre-existing materials or buildings, with the adaptive reuse, with the recycling of building materials and so on and so forth. And um, for our exhibition, we have coined this um, idea of, you know, sustainability as not just something that is related to ecology, which of course is very, very important, but that the idea of sustainability and that is shared by this group of architects or by this generation of architects really relates to questions of cultural and social sustainability, which directly relate back to, I think, the notion of preservation that Jorge was outlining in his remarks. And of course, we think that all these three uh, categories, the ecological, the cultural, and the social, have to be considered holistically. And uh, we also believe that the projects in our exhibition speak to this more holistic uh, understanding of what sustainability perhaps could and should be thought of. So here is a uh, look into the gallery, looking back to the, um, to the entrance wall on, in the far right. You see actually here in the foreground on the right, a project by Philip Yuan, who's going to be one of the speakers, um, as well as um, a couple of other projects um, by um, various architects we're not going to um, hear from uh, tonight. But then as we turn to the left, uh, we see here another installation view that shows us on the left, the wall dedicated to the bamboo theater um, by uh, Xu Tian Tian, whom we are going to hear from in, in, in an instance. And a, a little further to the left, unfortunately out of view here would be a project by Jean Ke, who is going to be our first speaker tonight. So I'm very happy to say that all the speakers of our first panel tonight are actually presented in our exhibition. Excellent. So with that, I would like to start and introduce all the three speakers at once. So um, I will make this introduction and then pass um, um, the presentation to the three speakers. So our first speaker tonight is Jean Que. He's the founder uh, of the award-winning architectural office Zao Standard Architecture, founded in 2001. He's a graduate from the Harvard Graduate School of Design and the Tsinghua University in Beijing. The work of Zhao's standard architecture spans planning, architecture, landscape, and product design. Ko's design for the MicroUnir project was praised for its views on conservation and adaptive reuse of a historic Hutong courtyard in the center of Beijing. And likewise, his, Hutong, uh, his, his children library and art center was the recipient of the 2016 Hakan Award. Jean Ko's work has been featured at the Venice Architecture Biennial, the MAC Vienna, the DAM in Frankfurt, Aedes Gallery in Berlin, the VNA in London, and MoMA, among other venues. The book, Hutong Metabolism, was just published uh, with Architangle in Berlin, and I'm holding a copy here, and I would highly recommend uh, reading for uh, further um, information on his work. The second speaker tonight will be Xu Tian Tian. Um, she is the founder of DNA Architecture, um, Design and Architecture, in, um, located in Berlin. Xu holds a, a BARC from Tsinghua University in Beijing and an MARC in Urban Design from Harvard GSD. Her practice seeks to distill architecture down to its fundamental elements, or what Xu calls the DNA of building practice. Her work was awarded the WA China Architecture Award in 2006, the Architectural League of New York's Young Architects Award uh, by the Architectural League uh, in 2008, and the Moira Gemmel, Gemmel Prize for an Emerging Architect in 2019. Her long-term work in Songyang County is what she calls architecture, architectural acupunctures, has drawn international praise and is currently featured in the MoMA exhibition. And also here too, we have a recent publication by Park Books that I would um, highly recommend in this connection. And then last but not least, our third speaker for tonight is Philip Yuan. Uh, Dr. Yuan is the founder of Archi Union Architects, an architectural practice based in Shanghai. 
Architecture Union combines traditional Chinese culture and digital construction processes into a practice he labels digital tectonics, a term that encapsul encapsulates the binding of ecology, technology, and craftsmanship. The work of Archie Union architects has been exhibited in venues and events such as the Venice Architecture Biennial, the Chicago Architecture Biennial, the Hong Kong Biennial, the Triennial of Milan, and many more international uh, uh, venues in recent years. Philip is a professor of architecture at Tongji University in Shanghai and is the author, editor, and translator of more than 20 volumes, including Computational Design and Digital Fabrication, both with Neil Leach, and Collaborative Laboratory, Works of Archie Union and Fab Union. Yuan was the 2019 to 2020 John Thomas Jefferson Visiting Professor of Architecture at the University of Virginia School of Architecture. Wonderful. And so with that, I would like to for Shang Ke to um, come to us and start his presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Martino um, and Hogi. Um, it's a great pleasure to join this colloquium. Um, my uh, short talk would be uh, um, titled Hutong Metabolism, same as the book that uh, Martino has just uh, shown. Um, I'm going to show uh, mainly uh, the micro uh, project but I'm going to also uh, quickly uh, flip through the images of the um, of the uh, micro hutong, which was um, at exhibition in MoMA and a few other um, uh, renovation projects of the hutong in the micro uh, metabolism series. Hutongs in Beijing, the traditional. Sorry, I I'm trying to. Okay, the traditional courtyard and alley system of urban dwelling that is the most essential part of the city have been captured at the center of the battleground between development, conservation and revitalization in the past decade. After two decades of redevelopment frenzy in the old city of Beijing, the Hutongs are on the verge of being either completely erased to make space for office towers, apartment and shopping malls, or disfigured by kitsch renovations that fake images of a nostalgic past. The subtle complexity of the Hutongs as authentic contemporary urban spaces have been overlooked by both advocates of tabula, of, uh, tabula rasa redevelopment and by the defenders of historical restoration. In either case, the operation involves the relentless exodus of Hutongs traditional dwellers, resulting in the gradual disappearance of ethnic diversities in the Hutong communities and a rapid diminishing of Hutong's traditional cultures. Here you see a few um, images that we took in 2016, um, right in the center of uh, Beijing, um, near, near the Forbidden City. The Hutong metabol metabolism series aims to explore alternative perspectives of looking at hutongs and their problems, to consider them as living organisms, to study them both as micro-scale macro scale infrastructures and in micro-scale units, to respond to the problems of both historic and futuristic thinking, and to explore the potential of hutongs and courtyards as generator of communal spaces and catalyst of social interaction. So um, the first project, actually the main project I'm going to show is uh, Micro Yard Children's Library. Um, 
here shows the location of the of the project. I'm going to do the timing. Sorry. Um, this is a typical quiet uh, um, hutong that is really just within uh, 1,000 meters uh, distance uh, from the Forbidden City in the southwest side of the city. So this is the, uh, the, the uh, existing uh, condition. It was uh, a typical Dazayu, um, what we call a um, uh, big messy courtyard shown on the map uh, of the left. And what happens um, in 99% of the, of the conservation practice is to clean everything, uh, like uh, shown in the right-hand plan, um, erasing the uh, um, contemporary urban history in the past that happened, or the, the residents build up in the past uh, uh, six decades, six to seven decades. So our question was to see um, if it's possible not to erase them, but um, really to recognize the contemporary um, layers and contemporary urban history that was uh, really uh, records the lives of residents um, in the past uh, six, seven decades in the urban center, which is uh, typical uh, of uh, almost every um, courtyard um, in uh, and Hutong courtyards in the center of the city. And um, here you see we um, proposed a small inserted concrete um, uh, children's library on the left and redesign um, and um, um, uh, renovate uh, and reuse some of the structures in the middle and in the right uh, to make a small art uh, gallery and um, dancing studio and art studio on the on the back. Um, so, um, yeah, this shows how the um, uh, the eight square six square meter um, art pavilion um, uh, that wraps around the big uh, uh, tree and uh, providing access for children to go to the to the roof and get close to the tree and the inserted library. And uh, of course we used uh, recycled uh, uh, bricks and um, for the walls and uh, pavements. Um, and later I'm going to talk about the concrete that we use um, for the uh, for the inserted uh, children's library. from inside uh, of, of the small um, inserted um, space. Um, we tested um, um, and uh, experimented on adding uh, Chinese ink uh, in the concrete to make it uh, uh, match better the, um, the surroundings of the gray brick in the hutongs. Um, yeah, here um, it, it was uh, actually we failed in the test uh, in the experiment, so the the, the ink was not uh, even, but it came out uh, quite nice uh, in a way. It immediately uh, cast the space back into uh, into the background. Um, I'm just going to flip through quickly the um, the um, images.
So by inserting this um, um, this built uh, concrete uh, space uh, um, carefully under the existing wooden structure, it creates an interesting dialogue between the existing um, and the new, um, which is uh, of of course always the focus, um, uh, the important theme in terms of uh, architecture when we come to the um, the the. Uh, issues of uh, renovation and renewal. And of course, uh, uh, the proposed program, we spent a lot of time debating what uh, is the most appropriate program um, we could introduce um, to the Hutong. So in this case, um, the, the space is um, uh, proposed uh, not as a private uh, space, uh, rather it, it's, um, it has um, a public program that uh, um, welcomed uh, kids uh, in the neighborhood uh, to use it always, uh, and it's always free uh, of charge. Um, um, all the details were designed in a very careful way, like uh, uh, we are renovating um, um, uh, a Western cathedral uh, with, uh, you see the gutter and uh, cover um, um, with uh, copper and all this. This is the bigger room of uh, the, um, uh, it was a two thirds of a former temple that we uh, proposed to use it as a multifunctional space, as a dancing studio. And, and there has been, um, there have been um, uh, over 60 events uh, before the pandemic started. Um, the Halloween party. Um, so this first um, project was really dealing uh, with um, uh, introducing public programs um, uh, to the Hutong, to the court charts, and making it uh, uh, a bit more public um, and uh, providing uh, uh, the much needed public space to serve the residents, and um, also recognizing uh, contemporary urban history, layers of contemporary uh, urban history instead of wiping them out. Um, this is this is some pictures uh, uh, we did uh, the mock-up. We brought the mock-up one to one to Venice Biennale. The second project, really a micro hutong, which is on display in um, in MoMA currently, um, is really dealing with um, how to create desirable space within extremely uh, limited area in urban center. This is about just 40 square meters. So the, the aim is to, to experiment of how to create five rooms uh, and a courtyard uh, within uh, 40 square meters. Um, again, uh, concrete with uh, uh, Chinese ink. I would just quickly uh, flip through. So, so this is the second issue we are interested in. Uh, how to create uh, uh, desirable space uh, for living within extremely limited uh, um, uh, boundaries. The third, of course, uh, recycled materials uh, 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 collected right in the Hutong was used for the facade. And the third project, uh, I wouldn't talk in detail about the design, but one thing is very important. The third issue we are, uh, we are concerned with is really about, um, it's common to all the old city renovation, it's about the toilets, the, the amenities. Um, what we, we did a survey and then um, it came out that one thing that is desperately needed for all uh, Hutong residents is a proper toilet and shower and a kitchen. 
So we designed, we spent a year and a half designing and developing this um, uh, manufacturable uh, uh, functional module, which is two meter by two meter. It has, it has toilet, shower, uh, kitchen, uh, dry uh, wash machine, dry machine, and, and the king size bed on top. Um, this this was um, intended not just for the Hutong, but uh, intended for all old city uh, renovations and possibly even in in uh, remote areas uh, and countryside. Um, we've uh, been uh, uh, developing this steel um, constantly. And uh, the last one I flipped through quickly is the um, is the social housing. We uh, uh, started and finished it during the pandemic, um, which uh, is uh, to create a dozen rooms, uh, units for um, people to, to live and uh, each uh, house, each unit is only about 15 square meters. And with in inserted toilets and shower, et cetera. And we are further developing uh, now even uh, even smaller uh, uh, toilet shower modules, um, and hopefully it could be uh, used in our uh, Yuanyang Terrace Field uh, Village um, uh, renewal and uh, uh, conservation projects. And here's this uh, Hutong Metabolism book, uh, published by Architango and together with Aga Khan Award. Um, uh, and thanks to Martino also uh, wrote a uh, uh, very important article inside and also this catalog uh, uh, of our exhibition uh, that uh, took place in Berlin, AIDIS. Um, my team, that, this was a few years ago. Um, Thank you. This is uh, my uh, uh, the end of the uh, uh, presentation. I think I've kept the time okay. Thank you, Martin. Thank you so much, Shank. Um, in fact, you're an overachiever. I think you could have spent a few more minutes, but we'll definitely come back to your presentation. <laughs> if you would mind, stop sharing your screen. Um, we can yes. then move onward right to our second speaker, Shu Chan Tian. Before we do so, however, I would like to remind our audience to please start typing in your questions into the Q&A. Um, um, box at the lower right of your screen. I will be reviewing those and we'll come back to your questions um, after the three presentations. We've already received um, a few questions, but please feel free to bring up your questions as they occur to you and we'll come back to them. So thank you so much and welcome Xu Tian Tian. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Thanks to Rich Klokium. Um, today I'm, I'm going to share our Songyan story, which is the work we have been done in the past eight years in um, Songyan County, a typical agricultural county in China. And in this process, architecture has become the strategy to revive uh, rural villages and also to um, build up an interaction and circulation between the villages and the county urban center. So here architecture is not only to um, preserve the vernacular building method and language, but also helps to preserve local communities and life. Um, <clears throat> and usually um, in this, um, the method we call it um, architecture acupuncture and small scale public program um, is introduced into each village according to its context and heritage and to restore the village identity. And eventually it's built up this um, mapping system in the county of Songyang. So the first project we worked, we started in, in um, the first village project was this um, in Pintian village, a very typical mountain village. 
and we propose to preserve a cluster of abandoned vacant houses at the um, at the entrance of the village um, to work with um, renovation. Um, um, this is to preserve the um, very original fabric of this ancient village. Um, <clears throat> so the building um, envelope keeps um, intact and we mostly work with the interior to reorganize, open up the space and reorganize into uh, the space into different um, functions um, to accommodate, accommodate different programs. And the construction was done by the local skilled workers, local villagers with traditional method, tenant and mortise wooden structure, um, which is very easy to assemble um, in, in the uh, on site and was done in, the whole construction was done, uh, finished in just a few months, less than five months. That's the um, uh, overall um, profile, um, maintain the original way. And all the spaces are reused um, for different functions, public uh, programs. For example, this is a artist studio with fabric dyeing um, artist art programs. And the second floor used to be storage room can be converted into a room for homestay business. Um, all the details are done in a, in a very um, local traditional method. And if you look at all these joints or the wooden nails are done um, by local um, craftsmen. And this has also become a very popular um, cultural and educational program in the region. So very often a Chinese village, an ancient Chinese village is a large family clan with one or a few surnames. The traditional to respect their ancestors um, as the pride and honor um, has, been, uh, has become the inspiration for us to work in this one village. Um, this used to be a most glorious village, but it's uh, in the ancient time, but it's surrounded by modern factory uh, and since the 90s. So the discovery of Wang Jing, the imperial scholar from Ming Dynasty, um, also one of the three most famous historical figures in the, in the Songyang County. Um, <clears throat> Wang Jing from, um, originally from this village uh, has bring the um, motivation and also the sense of pride and honor to all the villagers, to the whole community. And a new memorial hall for dedicated to this um, ancestor Wang Jing um, is programmed at the center of this village, facing the um, original Wang's um, ancestral temple. And it's the new memorial hall. The building is <clears throat> mapping with the village fabric um, to compose the, this volume into different uh, compartments or different chapters. And here we worked with uh, local building material and method. Um, for example, this REM wall, REM earth wall is done by the local villagers and the structural system is um, the concrete bearing wall system, just like the other uh, modern houses um, around. So the idea is that to work with both ancient and modern um, material or technique is to create a dialogue um, with the neighbors, uh, either ancient is the traditional or modern uh, contemporary, um, but also to kind of build, build, build up this um, bridge or um, with this ancestral to merge with its um, context. And with this mapping of the fabric, uh, the building has 17 corners. All these 17 corners are structural corners and 
as well as memorial corners. And each corner is lit from uh, top with a stone carving statue indicating the moment of a specific moment of an Awanjin's uh, lifetime. Um, all these stone carving are done by the factory um, just outside of the village. And all these moments were on these memorial corners um, creating a lifetime indicating the life story of ancestor Wang Jing. Um, unlike the traditional Chinese um, courtyard buildings with the void in the center open to the sky, here the composition of this space is, the, uh, is rather the, the reverse way. Um, we are focusing on the, um, the corners, um, introducing light and all these uh, memorial content. Uh, the corners are often less um, functional and often ignored. So here we want to take all the corners as the memorial uh, stage to create a temple uh, um, atmosphere, but at the same time also to free up the central space, the main space for different, uh, just to accommodate different activities or functions for the village. Uh, uh, community. Um, we've also worked with um, Taka indenture um, tradition, indenture history um, in Shitsam, Hakka village, um, as the cultural and historical heritage. And the indenture system is basically um, the, uh, the legal system to a Hakka society, almost as a foundation to the Hakka society. Um, in this case, we have been working with a local masonry. We were able to revive this masonry technique in actually, um, which is long lost building technique in the region. Um, and uh, we took this, um, this museum as the opportunity to, um, with three skilled workers, um, masonry workers, experts, they were able to train over a dozen young workers um, after this construction. So the building is um, as a background to the village connecting the mountain. Um, this Masonry, this local masonry technique has become very um, strong um, dialect or the main, um, very dominant uh, characteristic in the, in, the, in the space. So in this case, we preserve the, this small creek, original creek on site running from the mountain to the village. And with the water, the sound of water, um, the mist from skylight and also the breeze passing through uh, the space, this, um, this element become the, the accents to soften up this um, intensity by this masonry um, material and form. <clears throat> um, in this, the Songyang story, we have a chapter dedicated to rural economy, which is based on the um, local agricultural production or heritage, which we think, um, which we consider as also as the intangible heritage um, in each village. And these also help to build up a local economic circulation in Songyang County. So the first project is a renovation and expansion of um, abandoned oil factory at the entrance at the sunken site at the entrance of the village. Um, the original Camellia oil workshop is um, a historical building with over 100 years of history. Um, <clears throat> so this, um, the revive of this um, 
um, oil production program um, is to uh, reactivate this workshop as a historical building, but also to introduce the, the production as an intent for cultural heritage from Hong Kong Village to the visitors. So um, in other words, it's also to showcase this uh, agricultural and cultural heritage um, as a live museum. So in this case, the, the original workshop is um, embedded by our new expansion, almost creating a um, labyrinth um, circulation in the space to, to discover um, when you finally arrive at the center. And all the structure is, uh, again, the traditional um, tenant and mortise wooden structure. And uh, for the material, we were, able to, we were able to collect the pebbles from the creek and just make the walls and, um, with the pebbles cut in half. And it, it's creating this um, contrast between the historical ramped earth wall um, workshop with this new expansion space. Um, the drawing indicates that the original uh, workshop is really the sen uh, embedded at the center of this uh, whole compound. And when you arrive at this center after this uh, uh, circular uh, route, um, you will discover this production space um, with all the traditional um, wooden machinery tools made by wood and stone operated by the local villages. And the building, the original um, workshop, the, this historical workshop uh, kept everything in its original way. We only replaced the skylight, the roof uh, tiles, um, some of the roof tiles into the local glass tiles to bring in the light into the space and also to emphasize this um, atmosphere. So in this um, Xin village, it's well known for its production of uh, brown sugar in the winter season. And this is rather a modern factory that the, uh, the villagers were able to build their um, multiple layers, uh, stories, houses, modern houses. So in this village, the production of um, brown sugar is the element to introduce, uh, to restore the village's cultural identity. Um, similar to oil production, the, uh, the production of brown sugar itself is a, a, a live performance. And with this new factory, we were able to establish a um, villager union to integrate all these individual family workshops and operating this um, new factory. All these working stations um, are operated by different individual family workshops and they're lining up with the building structure and uh, with structure rhythm and skylights. So these are working as a background pattern for the movement and the motions by these uh, cooking masters. So the whole production, the main production space is conceived as a central stage. Um, in a way, we, we took these, um, the production agricultural production as a, um, we think this is a, a very modern concept of performance. And the production is running 24 hours in a day. So the lighting is also uh, treated as a stage lighting. And the space could also be used as a village center, a cultural space during non-production season. 
Um, another village, Caijai, is known for its best tofu in the region. And in this case, the new tofu factory is built at the entrance um, of this village next to a large, um, next to this his historical building, um, a, a large scale in the village. And the building sits on an existing terraced um, site. Um, other programs are divided into, um, just by the procedure of traditional way of making tofu from preparation to this grinding compartment. <clears throat> and then um, uh, boiling compartment and deep frying and at the end, the cooling compartment. So this is a, um, again, it's also like a um, shared kitchen for the village. Um, family workshops to integrate all these um, family workshops as the shareholders to operate this factory. But the, the production procedure is also opening up to the visitors as a learning um, educational program. And that's the sequence of traditional way of making tofu stretching along this slope, like a long scroll painting, um, opening up and inviting the visitors to um, observe this um, intangible cultural heritage from Taijai village. That's the walkway parallel to the, to the production sequence and it's open to, to, to the public, open to the villagers who are often taking this as just a leisure lounge, as a um, open pavilion. So all these production um, factories worked with um, a, as a social, social, stri uh, social structure to integrate the indi individual village family workshops into a collective econom economy, economic entity. Um, so in next, the last project, I would like to introduce the housing project in Shantian village, which has um, over 600 of years, but has been left um, um, almost vacant as a hollow village. And with this, uh, we consider this is a experiment after a collaboration with local village communities and with the local government. Uh, the transformation of this Shantian village um, is to convert all these abandoned vacant houses into um, homestay um, business um, and other um, cultural uh, leisure programs to invite, to open up to the city residents to, to visitors, as well as to providing this um, uh, employment opportunities for the local villagers and to um, attract young villagers returning home. So the renovation of these houses and the overall village fabric is done by very careful and minimal intervention um, of approaches. All these buildings maintained its original envelope um, to, as to preserve the um, memory of the, the village. And again, it's the uh, construction is done by the local skilled workers. It, the, the three main um, historical buildings are the public um, cultural space open uh, as a public um, um, platform. And that's the renovation again in the inside the house, uh, we started to reorganize the, the space and work with um, um, to accommodate um, our modern uh, living uh, space or functions, which is working as a in, in this um, in, the, in the house, it's working as a contrast um, with the original um, building texture. It's a contrast between 
new and old. Um, at the same time, this project, um, while the preservation on the building is rather um, um, minimal, um, very um, careful and sensitive approach, um, but it, the transformation of the village is a rather innovative social design to um, establish a collective hybrid collective economic entity um, to engage all the villagers in this um, in this um, operation. So we have four, three um, villager unions. Um, the villagers can participate with their vacant house, vacant farmland or equity and also village collective as a, a, a um, collective um, um, uh, participants. And then the, this uh, entity is also sponsored by the town and county government. So this is the structure, economic structure to protect, to preserve the basic interest of these villages. Most important to preserve their ownership on their house, houses and farmlands. Um, so the whole operation of this Chantian village preserve the very um, uh, authentic uh, rural country uh, village life, um, which has also be become a an attraction for the urban residents. It engages with this um, social design to um, inspire the, the, the local uh, village communities um, and also to um, um, introduce the rural village life to um, our urban um, visitors. That's it for my talk today. Um, and I will um, give the floor to Philip Yan. Thank you. Thank you, Shu Tian Tian. And on to Philip. Hello. Can you see the screen? Yes, all good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the invitation from um, Martino, your courage, the, the expression. And it's a great honor for me to, uh, secondly, I think second time to make a presentation, uh, make the lecture to Columbia University. And um, um, uh, today I, want, I would like to address the theme through the topic of machine and memory, recrafting the nostalgias in China. Uh, nowadays, with the development of increasing sophisticated uh, digital tools, including uh, design tools, uh, formation, uh, optimization, iteration, or fabrication tools, from robotic platform to the artificial intelligence, we can now um, achieve different kind of uh, approach to the production, mass production process of architecture away from the tradition crafts and the industry. In industrialization. So uh, and the relationship between the human and nature uh, has been changed uh, to the post-humanist uh, process, social process, because technology uh, 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 turning to be the, the second factor between the human and nature. So over the past few years, uh, uh, New Leach and me set up a platform, uh, Digital Futures, um, Yearly, we organize workshops and uh, a conference and make a lot of discussions and uh, promotions for the digital tools uh, in architecture. So the, the machines right now becomes extension of human being. So which is really important uh, influence the, uh, the architecture design, the thinking process, design process and, and the construction process. Also the, uh, the architects and uh, the material, material uh, uh, process has been totally changed from, um, uh, from the, uh, uh, the abstract uh, machine from the human thinking to the collaboration between the human and tools, which is the extension of the human skills to re-understand the nature and re-understand the environment and try to readdress the human location 
in the on the planet. So um, keep this in mind, and uh, we can interpret materials from two perspectives in contemporary architect context, context. On the one hand, digital technology has been deeply embedded in the architectural production today, establish an informational process from design to fabrication. In this way, architecture is not only designed by human in cor correlation with the material properties and energetic condition, but also process the characteristic of digital information from those auto uh, uh, automatic machine machines. Through the information iteration process, we can be able to drive materials flows into the certain optimization states, which can keep us uh, make a really good uh, re-understanding from uh, the, uh, the, the geometry perspective, from the cultural perspective, and also from the social perspective. So um, I think uh, I would like to address uh, the, the two uh, projects uh, I designed several years ago uh, to analyze how we uh, try to achieve the new tools which can engage into the material uh, intelligence and also at the same time to benefit of, uh, at the same time to balance the social cultural environment embodiment uh, in the project. So this is a, a machine I want to highlight we uh, uh, develop um, or set up uh, established in 2015 and which is the uh, robotic platform with uh, 18 axes, uh, which is the abstract uh, uh, machine for the future digital factory uh, located in Shanghai. And actually uh, on this uh, platform, we crafting robotics and try to achieve different kinds of uh, uh, craftsmanship which can have correlation, not only to technology, but also to the social production process. And this is one of the uh, projects uh, we, 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 we done several years ago, and also the, uh, the mock-up was exhibited in uh, M plus Hong Kong, and which uh, is re-fabricate and the, the, the bricks and could be uh, 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 redesigned, understand uh, the, the rhythm and the aesthetics of the uh, local breaks. And also we develop um, some on-site in-situ robotics, which also uh, means we do not only design the buildings, but also we design the tools. So this is on-site robotics can achieve uh, more than five craftsmanship, including the timber craftsmanship and 3D printing, etc., and can move into the site and construct different buildings. So uh, uh, take one example uh, from our uh, workshop, robotic carpentry, uh, which is the, the culture oriented uh, wood structure design and fabrication research. So in the exhibition, you can see all the components is prefabricated and which could be located by the reciprocal uh, structure, um, uh, efficient, efficient uh, based uh, uh, system, uh, a structure system, and also all the details uh, has been changed uh, uh, one by one. So we're crafting robotics and uh, try to, to introduce uh, the, 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 the tools and collaborate with uh, the designers and uh, the carpentry could be achieved not only by the, the carpenter, but also to the architecture uh, uh, students. So by uh, implementing these scenarios, um, we uh, 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 introduced one of our project, which is located in Sichuan province, we designed 2017. And so the, the, the project locating the uh, tradition uh, local um, uh, village, uh, uh, da Yi, uh, da Yi County, and which is uh, uh, the panda is from this county. And also um, uh, the first time I was invited to visit the site and uh, take a great impression for the environment and surroundings. We can uh, smell the, uh, the greenness and also the, uh, the, the site and also including different kind of uh, environment uh, uh, feeling. So uh, we try to they, they try to invite uh, me to design <clears throat> the community center and also uh, the eight um, BNB uh, hotels, and uh, the villagers change to be the stakeholder and try to make a new development understanding of how to engage their lives to the, the, the modern life. So uh, uh, in our design, I think uh, we introduce uh, the new technology, including the timber uh, uh, carpentry. And also we introduced the tradition uh, crafts, including the bamboo weaving and the, the, the tiles. So this is the eight um, 
uh, village, uh, eight uh, BNB uh, village. So actually, the totally we have six project uh, which was designed and constructed in from 2017 to 2018, two years. And today I have time to introduce uh, uh, two of them, the In Bamboo Community Center and also uh, the BNB uh, on the left. Also we have some uh, other uh, programs, including the, the uh, youth uh, auto camps and also the exhibition uh, craftsman for the local craftsmen uh, uh, and etc. So uh, this is the BNB, which located on the construction site and the, the several big trees. And uh, we try to introduce the tradition tiles uh, and which standing on the timber roof system. And the, the village is very familiar with the material, but actually we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we actually uh, uh, make it possible to introduce this, this, uh, the, the light into the, the middle courtyard uh, of this um, uh, the small BNB uh, house and uh, keep the original trees. So this is the community center, which is standing on the on the on the road on the on the road side, and the, uh, the project uh, we gave it is in bamboo. We can see through the allotments, the bamboos, and which is the typical uh, Limpan style uh, scenery in uh, in in Chengdu. And although the geometry system are totally changed, but actually the material and uh, uh, I think which keep the keep the memory uh, of the. the the local villages, what is the community center in, the, in their neighborhood. So this is the style roofs and uh, also embracing uh, the bamboo uh, forest um, in the neighborhood. So this is models uh, showing the technologies uh, relationship, how we uh, design the roof system and exhibit in, in Venice Benali. Uh, and this model also was collected right now in Hong Kong and plus. Uh, this is the steel and uh, and and the timber uh, integrate uh, structure system, and the geometry actually is a double curvature uh, 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 loop uh, which twist together. But actually, from outside, from the facade system is really tradition as a horizontal uh, cantilever uh, and transparent uh, under the roof, and showing the the, the people can embracing the, the the surrounding environment, and the smell the the, the the air and actually uh, which the windows could be totally open and, uh, and that is a typical style in, in a living style in, in Chengdu. So, the, but uh, it's difficult to really how to construct this kind of uh, uh, curvature uh, in the uh, very efficient time. So you can see all the, uh, the, the, the column beam system was category into different uh, types, but all the joints are different because the height of the roof system so we uh, custom all the joints and uh, very efficiently moving uh, this kind of uh, robotics and uh, custom all the joints for the, for the timber system. So this is the, the joint system. Uh, and this we name is like uh, the digital twins uh, for the optimization process and the fabrication process. And also we develop the, the tools on the robotics as effectors how to, how to how to uh, 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 fabricate uh, the, the the curvature beam, and uh, the detail drawings for the project is not um, the plans sections detail drawings, but this kind of uh, scripts uh, to the FU robot, which is a, 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 a software we develop from the team, uh, which can. Uh, 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 which can uh, uh, set up the, the connection from the, the rhino grasshopper to the robotic uh, uh, machine. And this is a guard uh, uh, house for the for the entry. And actually, this is was the geometry system is controlled by the uh, the, uh, the the bamboo and the the surface also weaving by the uh, the local uh, 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 tradition uh, labor. So the, the people stand in the middle, uh, who is the, the master uh, craft, uh, uh, local crafts, uh, uh, craftsman in the village. And he, he was uh, uh, 68 years old at that time. And I asked him um, he, uh, why you're still working on the side. He told me without his um, guiding, the young generation uh, don't understand how to weave in such, kind, such a big skill. Um, uh, by bamboo, so you can show, you can see, and 
uh, it's really important to keep the linkage from the, uh, uh, the different generation to learning from the, their, their daddy and the, their parents and to try to uh, to, to keep this uh, the tradition uh, moving on. And also uh, during the construction um, process, we can see uh, when the, the greenery, the landscape was planted, the most of the workers are the females. So I asked one of them why uh, your husband and your sons coming to working uh, on site. And they told me uh, all of them moving to the big city. So it's kind of a, a, a special phenomenon, the young generation or the, the, the main uh, labor all moving to the uh, uh, big city. So the urbanization actually uh, make this kind of hollow uh, phenomenon in China. So it's really important how to attract the, the people coming back, how to introduce the new technology and the new industry to rethinking on the mass production in the rural area of China, not just on the single building, but on how to construct building, how to uh, reorganize the social productive process. So this is the after construction of the uh, uh, projects. We shoot this video in 2018. But actually, uh, two months ago, I visit back and the, the village surroundings uh, change a lot because the local people make a different development uh, influenced by this community center and by the uh, uh, this kind of uh, new buildings for the community. So I think it's important uh, for the future, not just to uh, give them a, a beautiful building, a house, but maybe we should be thinking of how to teach them how to establish the new industry for the social productive process in architecture for the, for the, the, the rural area of China. Okay, and um, based on the, the time limits, I introduced another project, um, uh, the Inkstone um, uh, Limpan Community Center, which is just five kilos away from the, 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 the In Bamboo project, um, also in the same uh, county. Uh, so this project also we make a lot of practice and demos to, to implement uh, the robotic timber prefabrication and the brick mansion, also 3D printing as well. So this is the, the opening pro project. Uh, I make a speech and, and, uh, and also I, at that time, I, 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 I teach a group of uh, MIT students. And also we make a lecture on site in this building with uh, Liu Jiaquan and Xiang Ning uh, and with a lot interesting discussion on how to uh, uh, construct this building in the rural era of China. So this is the design process. You can, you can see the design, not just uh, form the geometry, but also we including the optimization, the, the efficiency, and how to understand uh, the structure system and uh, the construction details of the project. So this is the optimization process uh, to optimize the structure and timbers and make it really efficient in the special earthy, uh, earth, uh, 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 earthquake area uh, of uh, Chengdu to construct the big cantilever for the roof system. And uh, we designed this, uh, this beam, uh, which is standing on the uh, top and as actually the most big cantilever uh, uh, maximum is like six, six meters. So the beam is uh, have a timber and a steel uh, integrate uh, uh, joints and try to um, uh, 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 make the, the main beam cantilever uh, learning from the tradition, but actually it's, it's more than the tradition and based on the integrated structure system. So this is the, the wood beam uh, gluing um, uh, laminate uh, process for the uh, structures and also the joints and uh, the same fabrication as well. So this is the on-site work. You can see it is a steel uh, structure and uh, wood uh, wooden timber uh, 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 beams integrate uh, structure system. So the process of construction also uh, the, the the facade the skin is the prefab fabricate robotic uh, fabricate uh, bricks uh, uh, components by components, and also the brick is uh, we collect the uh, recycle uh, bricks and try to make them recycle use on the facade by the. Uh, the location actually is parametric design and located as a special relationship to each other. Uh, so this is the foggy uh, screen we shoot uh, on the Inpan, which is a, a typical screen array uh, in Sichuan, uh, the bamboo forest and uh, uh, the farming land 
and the, the water is integrated uh, and uh, flowing together. So the building uh, uh, standing in, in the middle of the Lin Pan and also we, we, we design the circulation uh, which uh, coming to be the farmer's market uh, in the weekend and uh, the, the farmers, local people passing through this building. So the circulation itself, the infrastructure itself changing to be the landscape. So this is the, uh, we, we try to analyze our understanding the screenery tradition culture uh, in China. So this is the foggy, the, uh, the sunny and uh, sunny day uh, for the project, different perspective. So uh, different circulation was integrated for the uh, multifunctional open space for the local villagers organize different events in this building. So also the farming and uh, land surrounding the allotments from the parents. So this is also uh, changing to be the, another uh, uh, special uh, local uh, space. Different seasons. Here you can see uh, uh, one uh, in the spring, um, uh, in the spring, uh, uh, the landscape changed to be extreme, extremely uh, beautiful, and also can see the. Uh, the brick uh, prefabricate uh, facade and also the big cantilever roof system. Collecting the water, falling down and uh, uh, to the, the middle courtyard. Uh, also, we introduce different. Uh, um, um, uh, different uh, crafts into the projects, including the right image, the all the furnitures and uh, the initial walls, internal walls in walls in the in the building was 3D printed by the uh, uh, recycled or uh, uh, environmental friendly uh, plastics, modified plastics. So okay, uh, I would like to finish the, uh, my uh, lecture by the small video. And this video also was exhibited in uh, Venice Bernardi last year. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your attention. Martino, that is. Thank you so much, Philip. And thank you all three speakers for three really, truly amazing and inspirational presentations with just extraordinary work. Um, uh, it's a thrill to you know, see you speak about these and see these beautiful images that really touch so many of us. Uh, we have a very large number of questions and we have only 30 minutes left so i will try to make some groupings and i'll ask all of the speakers to try to keep your answers as brief as possible so we can try to get as many answers as possible we received a few um questions uh, particularly for jean Ke and xu tian tian asking who funded these projects who is the client um jean Ke, would you like to start and then maybe xu tian tian 
Yes, um, this is really a good uh, critical question. I was uh, typing answers already uh, during uh, Philip's uh, presentation. Um, the first two projects, uh, Micro UR, uh, Children's Library, and Micro Hutong, were both funded uh, among uh, the funds raised myself with my friends. So it's basically initiated by ourselves because it's you know my my um, I I talked about it in the in the Hutu metabolism book with uh, the conversation with uh, with uh, Nandita Korea was it, it's it's really about uh, action because uh, in in Beijing in China we've been talking about this alternative way of uh, old city renewal for for decades and. Uh, because nobody believed that any alternative way is possible. So uh, about 2012, uh, after two years of uh, study, we decided to say, okay, we just going to raise our fund and do something uh, in Rio. And the, the, the two, uh, the co-living courtyard and the social housing um, was uh, funded by the government. We were commissioned uh, after they saw our build projects. So, yes, that's uh, uh, the, the 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 lesson. This is what I learned from the Indian architect Charles Correa. He said, "You know, you can't stand by just watch." In 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 this, in the fact that we see problems, we have to architects have to take actions. Um, I, I think this also. Uh, uh, um, is something we learned ourselves uh, uh, because most of the time architecture and architects has becoming has become a, a passive kind of profession but in in dealing with urban issues uh, i think it's very critical for us to to initiate uh, projects ourselves uh, and just do it um, with whatever resource we could pull ourselves i think Tian Tian also did a lot of uh, uh, these projects. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I will, I will, I will let Tian Tian to explain herself. <laughs> um, for all the project we've done in Songyang, they are um, public funded, um, but also in a collective way. Um, they're, they're, this is a, it's also quite innovative um, financial economic structure behind all these. Uh, projects, there are subsidy coming from um, cultural department uh, from the province and also subsidy coming from maybe cultural or tourism, agricultural. Um, so, and, and part of the funding is also from um, village collective money. And, and I mean, this whole Songyang story, to me, it's, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a social structure. It's a social design system. So the funding is in a way in when you were working in the rural context, you have to work, you have to find a way to, 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 to receive funding, whether the project applied to culture or applied to agriculture, um, financial um, re requirements. Excellent. I actually have a follow-up question for you, uh, Tian Tian, from an anonymous attendee asking, um, if you could explain how the local community was involved in the decision-making process and if the overall business progressively became financially sustainable or if it still depended on the government funds. Um, all of this project engaged the um, communications with the, um, the local village communities from the very beginning to discuss their um, what is the most essential to them or um, for example, ancestor or something, um, or even the brown sugar production, tofu production, whatever that um, they are proud of. Um, and we, we work with that content. And um, the construction um, is also done by the local villagers. Um, and to use most of the projects are using the um, local building method and material. And, and this is also strategic to involve uh, engage everybody into this uh, procedure. Um, well, also um, considering the, the tight budget on, on each project. So in a way, I, I would say this is very pragmatic um, structure um, that um, to 
engage all the uh, communities. And some of the projects are self-sustainable uh, and, and financially, uh, like the Shantian uh, village has been doing quite well, um, even in the pandemic. Um, but some of the project, like the cultural project, well, I, I would say that and all these cultural projects, including the Ancestors Hall and also the in, in Hakka Indian Museum, the buildings are conceived as low maintenance um, operation. So it's just, you, you don't really um, pay much of the um, cost to maintain the, the buildings, for example, air conditioning or just the um, maintenance staffing, um, all these things are eliminated in the, in the project. Um, just to, and, and it also, that's the way, that's the local way and um, dealing with probably ancestors house in every village. Excellent. Um, another question for you, Tian Tian. Um, by Xinji Nya Ho. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, the question relating the preservation heritage status. Do these villages receive an official status as historic cultural village? And do such kind of reuse renovation program, uh, we already answered that, are they supported by the local government? Yes. So the question is, you know, do they receive some kind of heritage status? Um, for the, uh, the villages, some of the villages are entitled as the traditional village by the Chinese Ministry of Housing and Construction, Zhujianbu. Uh, so the traditional villages will receive funding for preservation and also coming with uh, regulations um, on any of the uh, new additions or construction happening in the village. But for those um, non-Chinese, uh, uh, non-traditional village, like some of the villages are rather modern. Um, for example, the Xing village with the brown sugar, and it's rather a more contemporary um, and, and looking. But in this village, the, um, the brown sugar uh, workers are entitled as um, Cookie masters, um, as uh, the brown sugar production is the intangible, entitled with the intangible heritage, cultural heritage by the local county government. So all these workers become the masters, the celebrities in the village. Yeah, it's incredible, actually. Um, let's go back to uh, Beijing, to the Hutong. So there's two questions for you, Zhang Ke, relating to the materiality. One was about why concrete, and another one by Ru Jia. Um, you know, are these spaces livable in the hotel project? I think the person is asking about the micro right. hostel. And um, so I think you may want to say something to that also. Yes, the concrete question is very good one. It uh, we had choices of uh, either steel reinforcement or concrete re reinforcement due to the contemporary uh, seismic uh, requirements uh, coding of the city because none of these um, uh, traditional uh, wooden brick structures uh, in the old city were um, seismically uh, stable for earthquake. Uh, as required here in Beijing. So when we uh, have to apply for approval, uh, uh, official approval of the planning bureau, then we either have to reinforce it with steel frame or with concrete frame. So that's one of the reason. Of course, the other reason is uh, we wanted to experiment ourselves this uh, concrete uh, added with Chinese ink to, to see um, a new uh, material um, that could be working subtly with the great brick environment and creating a good dialogue between the existing wooden uh, structure, uh, between the existing and the new in a subtle way. So when you first see it, you it doesn't jump out uh, as very loudly. Uh, uh, as, as I talked before, that to, to, in the old city, it's very easy to shout aloud. But, uh, you know, but to how to make a uh, recognizable contemporary presence at the same time, keeping it uh, quiet as a dialogue. So, so that was uh, the, the, the experiment that we have uh, been 
developing. Of course, that this doesn't ex exclude the 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 care careful um, um, maintenance of the wooden structure of uh, replacing some of the wooden beams and and uh, reinforcing the the wooden columns uh, as uh, as the typical uh, conservation uh, projects uh, in the West would do. Uh, so so the concrete it was uh, deliberately added as a as a new contemporary layer. Uh, but but this is not ordinary concrete. It was uh, was uh, 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 subtly tuned uh, to 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 work with the existing uh, uh, background. Excellent. You've already actually answered another question by Lucy Young, who's actually asking specifically asking about the maintenance of the existing wood buildings, if there was any uh, effort and thinking going into that. So we can say this was answered. There's another question for you, uh, Jean-Cue, by Peter Siegenthaler asking how many hutongs are actually left in Beijing and are there official policies? policies municip municipal for example that effectively protect them and encourage their reuse yes um you know by by the year of 2000 and 2001 you know at that at that time we have about eight even 85 90 percent of the hutongs in the old city were left but the destruction really happened in the past two decades. So all the, because uh, there was, when, when the economy started to rocket uh, up um, in the old, in, in, in Beijing, in China. So there was, a, there was a policy which was clearly not correct uh, of putting development uh, uh, in as the precondition of conservation. But the, this has been um, um, uh, reverted in the past five years. So when we started to work on it in around 2010, um, there was about 30% of the old Hutong areas uh, were still left. It was shown in one of our, uh, my slides in the first few pages of, of the, the existing area. But within this, um, there's only 17% were strictly conserved area. And uh, the good thing is now uh, uh, conservation is, is being put in the old city uh, throughout China as the, as the first uh, priority. Um, so that's the good thing. But the risk is also what I talked about is uh, it's now the conservation equals to to uh, to facade uh, uh, restoration and beautification of a nostal nostalgic uh, old look, um, that still remains a problem. Thank you. We go back to Songyang County. There's another question for Xu uh, Tiantian by Lucy Young, and she is wondering um, about the uh, revival of traditional crafts that you were invoking when you're talking about edifying a local economy. And um, the um, um, audience is asking, will the local villagers, especially those young people, autonomously apply these crafts in local construction or only for the outsiders project? So I think the question here is, you know, is this creating a local, locally sustainable economy or is it mainly directed towards sort of a touristic uh, presentation of, of, of the, of the economy and the livelihoods? Uh, this is definitely a local um, and sustainable. For example, the brown sugar is production. Uh, the production is done every year. Um, it, it, it happened in the winter season, but um, um, tourism isn't the main purpose of all these projects, but it does open up the, the assets, the, the heritage as a valuable assets um, um, to the tourism and to, uh, well, I would say this is rather um, cultural, um, educational tourism in, in local, um, in, in the region. Um, and all these workers, I mean, um, with the production uh, as a public cultural event, um, um, it, it increased the price of all this production um, 
for example, the, the, product, uh, the price of the uh, brown sugar has increased four to five times in the past years and also attracted young villagers returning home and joining the production um, to make enough income, actually better income than uh, working as a construction site workers um, in, the, in the cities. So this has become a kind of a um, circulation in, in, the, in, uh, in terms of the product, product but also in terms of inspiring, attracting new villagers returning home. Wonderful. We actually have a related question about craft people for Philip. And this is a question by Jiao Zhang, uh, who is curious about the craftsman role in the digital fabrication process. Do you think they are going to be replaced by the robotic arm? Is high tech going to replace <laughs> traditional craft? Yeah, I think as a rose, uh, because um, uh, I'm the professor uh, leading a very big team in Tongji and uh, to make uh, R&D research in the architecture building technology. So I think um, uh, we try to set up new model, which is the human machine collaborative future. That is not the based on the robotics, but maybe some uh, other machines or softwares, uh, toolbox, which can give extension skills to human being. So make a lot of development based on PhD program on the building technology, including uh, softwares and uh, hardwares, robotics. I think the future is not a solo uh, human centric design based uh, process, but the future should base on the human machine collaborative and re-understanding the human and the planet and how to more environment friendly living on the planet and more efficiently or uh, more uh, accurately address the human beings in the nature, including the buildings and, and the human beings, uh, buildings and human beings. So I think um, I, 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 I do not want to predict if the robotics replace human labor, but I want to predict the future should be a human machine collaborative future. And uh, we training such a big team of the future architects. I think the future architects should learning how to re-understanding the environment uh, re-understanding the truth, re-understanding the, uh, the industry. So how to address the more um, um, uh, 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 ethical or reasonable uh, practice for the, uh, the future, including China, including the whole world. And actually another question for you, Philip, relating more specifically now to the question of preservation. Uh, Jia Sang is asking, um, all of your projects today seem like newly constructed architecture. Some of them are reusing, reusing original materials. I'm wondering, is it possible to use digital fabrication tools in the adaptive reuse projects, especially those um, additions to existing buildings? It's a very good question. Um, I think uh, I'm not expert in the preservation or conservation uh, design. I think that's a really um, uh, uh, important to really understand the authentics of the buildings and how to take care of the, the building in the urban context. Uh, most of my projects located in the context and in my design process, I consider uh, uh, very delicate and carefully uh, for the, the, the surroundings. I think including the, the culture things, environment and including the material, uh, uh, so on and so forth. Um, uh, so I think uh, uh, most of my pra practice actually try to introduce uh, the surrounding the materials and also the surrounding uh, relationship into the, uh, the, the, the crafting process and the, uh, the, the construction process. I also have several um, projects, including the, in Tongji, I renovate uh, the Tongji um, auditorium, uh, more than 10 years ago, and also on the uh, uh, Pompu Riverside, I also renovate a uh, traditional building. And also we, in, in the process, we introduce a lot of building technology uh, understanding, including ventilation, energy saving, all these kind of uh, details. But maybe this kind of technology is hidden 
uh, in the authentics of renovation process. So I think uh, sometimes uh, what is absence, what is presence is important to be decision by the designer. And uh, the most important attitude is how we uh, can uh, friendly uh, looking surroundings and how to friendly design the futures based on this context. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Two more questions for you, Philip. Um, Lucy Young is wondering, uh, relating, uh, has a question relating the volume of your projects. Uh, and she's mentioning um, that, you know, by implanting such a big architecture or architectural complex into the rural context, what type of influence do these projects form to the local people? So the question is, what is the impact of large buildings in, in a rural community? And actually a related question by Anna Rabinowitz is, how involved was the, uh, the, the local community in determining the programming design materials and what was important to preserve, construction technique or the traditional building form? Okay, that's a good question. I think uh, as to the scale, uh, which based on the new program, actually the urban or the rural uh, development in China is uh, uh, re re increasing uh, dramatically uh, over the past 20 years. So I think um, the program is not from the designer, it's from actually the, the communication with the local uh, community and the local government. I think, uh, 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 the, the, to designers, it's important to think about the scale and the height and also uh, how to integrate into the urban, uh, the rural fabric. So uh, I think the scale of the buildings uh, around 2,000 square meters in the neighborhood is okay. The first impact project we have uh, in the village, we have 80, 86 families and, uh, and the site is constructed on the two um, uh, courtyards because of pe people moving out. So it's, it's teared down for more than five years. So the, the, the local people take away the, the, the two uh, old buildings, uh, two courtyards. So we, we, we designed two circle, uh, circles to twisting together, which based on the, the tradition original site. I think uh, we've taken uh, uh, the scale of the building in consideration very carefully. And the second the building actually, which is the uh, uh, collaborate with OCT, uh, which is the one of the most uh, biggest uh, developer who fo focus on the rural aero development, which is the first exhibition space for the, for the project. So I think uh, the local uh, surroundings are all the farming land. So that project is showing the new uh, lifestyle or new possibility, how to integrate the tradition local uh, 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 traditional local living uh, models and uh, events and how to introduce this kind of events to the uh, urban uh, uh, citizens, so urban people. So I think uh, the skills are okay. And uh, that's showing the population density, the development speed and uh, uh, in China, uh, which the program actually all based on the communication with the local people. So I think that's the phenomenon uh, what's happened uh, uh, over the past few years in China. Uh, as to the, what's the second question? Sorry. Um, uh, the uh, second question, um, sorry, what was the second question? You know what, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we have uh, five minutes left. I have a couple more questions for Tian Tian. Uh, the first one is by Zhu Li. Uh, who was impressed by the idea of integrating the practices of intangible cultural heritage into those places, meaning the villages in Songyang County. My question links to tourism and the ICH, uh, so related to something we have already discussed. Will the visitation negatively affect the intangible cultural heritage, leading to a staged performance? What roles can architects play to mitigate that concern if it exists? Um, I would say the other way around. We are working on both. We are focusing on the production, you know, to provide a better uh, um, space um, for production uh, with higher standards. Um, but at the same time, we also open up the performance, you know, to attract visitors, which is, um, it, it works with the tourism and educational tourism and it's 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 not a bad thing because when you when the um, production is done was done in the family workshops basically the family kitchen uh, the product couldn't fit with uh, food uh, 
certificate requirements. And um, so when collecting all these um, family workshops um, into a village union, first it engages the individual villages into the market economy with a collective economic format. And second, it also um, improve, um, actually provide a open platform to, um, to observe, but also as a kind of a, a request um, on the production workers um, on their daily um, work. Um, what would I put it this way? Um, I think it's, a, it's rather motivation, um, not a requirement. It's actually a motivation, like I said, in the, the brown sugar cookie masters are becoming the celebrities. So they do, when they're uh, making the brown sugar, it's, it's not only a performance and they're something they're proud of. So they also want to improve the quality of whether brown sugar or tofu or rice wine. So these are, we think it's just kind, kind of all, um, many things coming together um, into all these um, intangible cultural heritage has the um, ability to um, revive the, the village and to kind of a, bring a communication interaction between the villages and visitors. I, uh, Martino, yeah, I would like to say something about uh, Tintin's project because it's a uh, very inspiring. Um, uh, 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 since we are doing some uh, 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 village uh, um, uh, renewal projects in Yunnan currently, I think the 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 one of the most inspiring um, aspect of Tintin's projects. Are she always um, engage with production of local production, and such as factories? Um, but those factories are not just uh, functional, uh, nice spaces. They are also uh, as um, as community center always. So it, it it becomes in the end as a, a functioning as a catalyst of both the local economy and as interaction spaces, uh, uh, communal spaces for the locals. I think these, this aspect is very inspiring for, you know, for ourselves, uh, uh, you know, currently uh, doing countryside projects in villages. Yeah, thank you so much for clarifying that, Jean-Ku. And I can absolutely confirm what you were just saying, having visited, having had, you know, the opportunity to visit Xu uh, Songyang County myself and experiencing that in person. And I'm afraid we are coming very close to the end our, of our session. I do want to um, ask one more question from the audience. Um, again, um, relate, uh, relating to Xu uh, Tian Tian's project. Uh, where and how do uh, these villages keep their traditional construction skills and craftsmanship? Is there any training center or mentorship for con uh, continuing these preservation contractors? So also relating to the intangible cultural heritage question we just had. Um, yes, there have been um, training programs um, going on simultaneously with all these production and um, especially um, the local building um, construction method um, with younger, um, actually the, also the, 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 uh, the demand on renovating um, the local traditional houses um, also um, inspired younger villagers returning home and joining this, um, the educational program, training program organized by the local government. And um, they're also um, for the production, um, factories, I would say that every villager in, in the village the, uh, sk are skilled workers. Uh, they have been making this at home every day. So uh, there were no need to, for, the, for, the, for further training, um, but it also, um, it, it's more of a kind of an educational classroom for the young visitors from other regions, from, from the county urban center or from other villages. 
Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Tian Tian, Zhang Ke, and Philip Yuan for your wonderful presentations and for you sharing your thoughts. I think we've raised uh, a number of really very crucial questions that will continue tomorrow. Um, the relationship of craft and technology, the question of the rural and the urban, the question of heritage and preservation with, re with regard to new construction and so on and so forth. And with that, I would like to give it back to Jorge. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Martino. And again, thank you all for your wonderful presentations. Uh, what an inspiring evening. And thank you to all the participants in the audience as well for the, I don't think I've ever seen such a question and answer on fire. I mean, there was just so much, so much going on uh, in peril. So it just speaks to the amazing uh, depth and the beauty of the work, the really moving project. So we're just really thrilled, uh, again, really honored to uh, have your participation. We are now in the very kind of, um, in very unique fashion, gonna take the longest break a conference has ever taken. We are gonna take an 11 hour break and we are going to reconvene in 11 hours. Again, some of us, in China, we'll go about our day and come back to the conference. Others will go to sleep and wake up tomorrow with a whole new ideas uh, and questions, and we'll have four more presentations. So please join us back at 9 a.m. tomorrow for the continuation of the Fitch Colloquium, honoring the founder of the Historic Preservation Program, James Marston Fitch. Uh, and in collaboration with MoMA. So thank you all. We cannot, you know, we cannot hear the roaring clapping of the audience, but, you know, we, I, I, I do it for, you know, in, for everyone. And uh, thanks again. Um, have a good day, good evening, and we'll see you uh, in 11 hours. Thanks again. Goodbye. Thank you. Pleasure. Goodbye. To be here.